Hey friend, Brandon here. The Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro is easily one of Google's best, if not their best smartphone in a long time, and maybe even ever. Here are my top six best and worst things about the Google Pixel 6 Pro. And if you wanna check out my full in-depth 28 minute review on the Google Pixel 6 Pro, you can check it out in the card up here or in the description. Also, this video is sponsored in part by Factor and their delicious and healthy meals, but more on them later. Let's start off with one of the best things, the price. When Rick Osterloh from Google's hardware division first teased the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, he mentioned how this would be Google's first pre premium flagship device and that it would end up costing the same price as other premium flagship devices out at the time. So most of us were primed to expect these phones to start at almost $1,000. Even I was tricked in many ways to anticipate a much higher price and I was the one who leaked the European prices. Much to so many people surprised, Google would take a two-tier approach with the Pixel 6 coming in at the mid-range at $599 and the Pixel 6 Pro competing in the premium flagship range at $899. This has made Google's devices extremely competitive with the Pixel 6 Pro undercutting the Apple iPhone 13 Pro models, the Samsung Galaxy S Ultra models, and even makes Samsung's FE line seem like a bad deal next to the Pixel 6 based upon specs and software alone. Google freaking crushed it here with the price, giving us a spot on price for the Pixel 6 Pro and an extremely fantastic delight to dollar ratio on the Pixel 6. And since demand is multiples higher than what Google anticipated, it really seems to emphasize this even more. By the way, if you want to buy the Google Pixel 6 or Pixel 6 Pro or check out my accessories guide that I made, check out the links in the description to find out what's in stock and what my favorite picks are. While Android 12 is over overall really great, and I like it a lot, there are some quirks and bugs that remain in it that managed to make it a less than enjoyable experience. Initially, when I transferred my data from my previous Google Pixel 5 to the Pixel 6 Pro, I had issues with system UI crashing regularly, Instagram stories crashing whenever I tried to create one, and YouTube Studio crashing whenever I went to look at the comments. That's terrible because I love interacting with all of you. Speaking of, leave a comment down below on your best and worst things about the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Now, it is important to know that I was able to resolve many of these issues by performing a hard reset and setting it up from scratch, but that shouldn't happen to begin with. Doing a clean install defeats the purpose of the data transfer tool. It's just overall inconvenient and an awful experience. Artem over at Android Police has been experiencing tons of issues because he transferred data from another Android phone and many Android phones before then. But thankfully, it is an issue that you can mostly resolve if you know how and are patient. But I still encounter a regular issue with YouTube closing on me when the video is either playing in the background or if the phone screen is off. I've had it happen to me multiple times within five minutes and I honestly can't figure out why it does it. There's not a single day that I have where it doesn't close multiple times. It's actually kind of frustrating. Right now I'm testing out whether or not it has something to do with the proximity sensor being covered, which is anytime it's in your pocket or when flip the sh is being activated. And finally, there's hope that Google will resolve a lot of these issues with Android 12. It is their most popular operating system. So I have a really hard time believing that they'll let these issues persist. The Apple iPhone has held the crown for the best haptics for many years now and rightfully so. Unfortunately, the options we've had on the Android side have been lacking in many ways. Oddly, there are many devices that have some pretty fantastic, if not industry leading specs and features, that they continue to have this subpar haptic experience. I've often said that having a premium experience is about the holistic experience and poor, loose, wild and spongy haptics can really pull you out of that otherwise premium experience. The Google Pixel 6 Pro manages to have the best haptics to date on Android, which is extremely nice to see, or I mean feel. <laughs> it makes the experience more immersive and like certain actions are confident, clear and substantial. If Google can expand on the haptic patterns that are available, like what you'd see on an iPhone or like a PlayStation 5 controller, that would be amazing. The Google Pixel 6 Pro has adopted a lot of premium design cues often found on premium Android phones, making it feel quite a bit more high-end and sleek compared to their more earthy, warm, plastic, or composite covered or built designs. That was a really wordy sentence. Anyways, overall, I really like the new design and hope that they keep it around, but refine it. That's because there are some flaws. First, it looks premium, but premium based upon what used to be premium before. In many ways, it looks like an older Samsung Galaxy S10 device with its boxy screen design that doesn't have that more visually clean corner radius that you'd find on something like an iPhone or a Pixel 5. It also has a glossy, slippery, and fingerprint collecting finish to it while other brands have moved to a matte finish, which I have always preferred. It also has little bits of fit and finish issues that I would not expect on a premium device. Things like the SIM tray being a lighter color than the rest of the frame, the seams between the glass part of the camera bar and the plastic camera bar curve being visible instead of covered in something to make it look seamless, like a matte finish, and perhaps a more aggressive curve to the edge of the display than most would prefer. There's just a bit more that Google needs to get right next time in terms of fit, finish, and design. They need to be current or leading the trends rather than behind the trends. The camera is one of the biggest areas of interest for those considering a Google Pixel, so we'll definitely have to talk about it a bit for this section, but instead of just telling you, I'll show you, along with showing you this video sponsor Factor and their delicious, healthy, never frozen, chef-created meals that you can easily prepare in a microwave or oven in minutes. First, the 50 megapixel main camera on the Google Pixel 6 is amazing. It lets in far more light, which means that it looks better in low light photo and video than previous Google Pixel devices, and creates a fantastic 
fantastic natural bokeh or that blurry background when you're up close to a subject. I actually prefer using this over the portrait mode feature because it not only looks better, but it avoids any sort of algorithmic issues with the portrait cutout and gives you a much wider field of view. By the way, I've been really eagerly waiting to make this video because these drinks look delicious. You got an apple beet ginger, carrot orange ginger, apple kale wheatgrass, and pineapple turmeric basil. That seems pretty healthy and yummy. The ultra wide camera is fun and nice for capturing a ton in a small space like indoors, but it's the telephoto lens that makes it especially great. When the dedicated telephoto lens kicks in, the quality is really good. When you add in the fact that the telephoto lens compresses the background or makes it feel like it's way closer and bigger than it actually is, you get that classic normal camera portrait look compared to an artificial portrait mode shot where the background looks tiny and well, not compressed. I do like that the front facing camera has a wide angle view, but I do wish it was even wider like what you had on the Pixel 3. By the way, Factor offers meat, seafood, and veggie based dishes and then preferences that include keto, calorie smart, and chef's favorites. Add in all the cool camera features that are so easy that all it takes is pointing and tapping a button. The Google Pixel 6 Pro camera is so much fun to use. That doesn't mean the camera is perfect though. It has its weaknesses and quirks. First, the front facing camera is okay. And I just find that odd. I really hope they go for a better front facing camera in the future. Hmm, which one should I make? Grilled chicken and cheese Brussels sprouts, cream Parmesan chicken, or the spicy turkey poblamo bowl? I also wish the ultra wide camera was as high quality of a sensor as a telephoto and that it would have autofocus. Another quirk is that the telephoto camera on the Pixel 6 Pro doesn't always kick in. Sometimes it just digitally crops in on the main sensor, which isn't the best looking image. This is probably the result of a minimal focal range where you have to be a certain distance away from a subject in order for it to be in focus. This is an issue on any lens, but it seems like the software is overshooting this quite a bit because you can actually step away from the subject until the actual telephoto kicks in and then start walking closer to it and it'll stay on the telephoto lens with quite a bit of range to get closer and it's still in focus. Also night sight photos seem to take longer than usual. Let me explain. First, movement will cause the night sight photo to become softer as it's capturing a ton of photos and just moving around makes it, well, less than ideal. And those movements are amplified when you're using a telephoto camera, so telephoto night sight photos can become quite blurry if you're not able to stay still enough. By the way, these factor meals are designed by dietitians, so there's tons of nutritional quality, they're delicious, and it's seriously coming in clutch for me during the super busy season. Seriously though, this is so good. The chicken's not dry or anything. The flavors are just insane. Ruby's down here, and she's frustrated that I'm not feeding her any of it. Go check them out by clicking the link in the description and use promo code TECHTODAY100 to get $100 off your first four weeks of Factor. Thanks so much to Factor for sponsoring this portion of the video and <laughs> feeding a hungry Brandon so I can make content like this for you for free. The display on the Google Pixel 6 Pro is actually kind of fantastic. It has fantastic color accuracy, is nice and clean with great viewing angles and without color shift with a uh, minor caveat. We'll get to that in a minute. It also has an LTPO panel, which means that it can ramp up and down its refresh rate from as high as 120 hertz to as low as 10 hertz. That means at 120 hertz, it looks silky smooth and snappy when you're navigating through the phone. It can support high frame rates in games, and it can ramp down to 10 hertz to save battery. I honestly think this is the best looking display I've ever seen on a Google Pixel device, and I would know. I have every single one of them. I don't have a problem. Nope. Nope, nope. Now the display isn't without its issues. First, it has a curved waterfall display, which means that it's incredibly difficult to find a screen protector for it that just doesn't stink. It also means that there's a slight darkening or discoloration on the far edges, but I can say it's fairly mild on the units I've seen. And thankfully there hasn't been any issues with accidental touches either, but based on some of the stories I'm hearing, it does seem like the glass is a little bit more prone to cracking than a mostly flat display. So, well, that's less than ideal. And uh, from from normal drops and stuff, not, not a clamp. Beyond the camera, the Google Pixel is known for its amazing software features. You have the vastly superior Google Assistant throughout, features like call screening so you can avoid spam callers. You have hold the phone where the Google Assistant sits on hold for you and notifies you when someone is back on the line, so you're actually talking to a human being. You can even get data on how busy a business is and what the ideal time is to call them. And there's so much more, but one of my favorites is car crash detection. I'm continually amazed at what the Google Assistant is able to do and how it's actually something that acts like a real assistant, but it's on your phone. Oh, and Magic Eraser is pretty insane too. Google Pixels have mostly all had fingerprint readers on the back of the phone, which is super convenient and reliable. But for the Google Pixel 6, they moved to an in-display fingerprint reader. And to be clear, I haven't liked a single in-display fingerprint reader, even the ultrasonic ones that you find on Samsung devices, but it's especially lacking on the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro. There have been some software updates that supposedly make it work a little bit more reliably, but I still find it to be slow and inconsistent. On top of that, after using the Pixel 4 and its project solely based face unlock, I really miss having it. It seems like a great loss. 
It's extremely convenient to use something like Face ID on the iPhone where it just unlocks immediately when you open an app because, well, you're looking at the screen. It's kind of obvious what your intent is. And the Pixel 6 had many interactions that were similar to that. I really hope Google makes the fingerprint scanner better and adds face unlock. I want to be able to interact with my phone in both ways. For Google's first endeavor into making their own custom mobile chip, they did a fantastic job. It has mostly been an extremely smooth and honestly uneventful process, which I think is a good sign. It's business as usual rather than something that's overwhelmingly subpar that detracts people from being able to enjoy the phone normally. While they definitely had help from Samsung in the development of the chip, they did add their own Google strength and flair to it with a strong focus on artificial intelligence and machine learning processing that takes place on the phone itself. Things like live transcribe, translation, and dictation make this especially clear and impressive. The fact that it's not processing things in the cloud, but on your device also means that it's even better at protecting your privacy than before. Now as for the battery, they're doing the obnoxious thing and not including a charger, and apparently it doesn't charge at the full 30 watts that many were led to believe. I guess that's something to do with specific chargers actually charging at 30 watts and others that don't and but I don't know it's not really clear. It shouldn't be confusing or inconsistent and it would be way easier just to give you the charger that works best for it just a thought. On top of that the Google Pixel 6 Pro has the largest battery on a Google Pixel to date but its battery life seems to be just average or typical rather than astounding like what we've seen on the Google Pixel 5 and 5a. It does seem like you can get better battery life if you primarily use Wi-Fi instead of mobile data and if you refrain from using 5G and instead use 4G, which isn't the most ideal. I mean, like, why are we paying for all this? So I really hope Google is able to make their next chip significantly more power efficient so the battery lasts longer and even a larger battery on top of that. And those are my top six best and worst things about the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Overall, it's a great phone. It's my main driver. I really love using it. And some of these things are a little bit more nitpicky. And some of these things are kind of really significant and legitimate that need to be addressed by Google. Anyways, let me know what you think are the best and worst things about it in the comments. If you decide to pick up the Google Pixel 6 or Pixel 6 Pro, make sure to use the links in the description as they help support the channel. And don't forget to check out the link for Factor's delicious and healthy meals and use promo code TechToday100 to get $100 off your first four weeks of meals. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.